Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at preparatory support material for Math 155, week number 7. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at evaluating expressions for a given input. <clears throat> That's math speak for solving problems given that we're told, hey, use this number for that letter. Uh, and solving an equation for a given variable. Uh, we're going to have x and y is maybe in a problem. Um, and we're going to be asked to find, you know, what's X, what's Y, okay? So that's really all we're looking at. Uh, this is a little diagram here, really doesn't relate to anything in here, but I thought I'd throw it on here just to remind you that, you know, anytime you've got multiple operations going on, you've got multiple things that you're doing to the terms in a math sentence, you know, you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, taking them to powers, etc. Um, and, and those things are, are the numbers and or letters. There's an order to operate on a problem, if you will. And what this one is doing is it's numbering things for you. It's basically saying, hey, the first thing you would do here is that exponent. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We don't have grouping symbols. We do have an exponent. Uh, then it's telling us, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to multiply because that's three times X and two times X. And, and then once we're, we're done with that, we would do steps three and four. Uh, basically, we'd have a solution for three and four, if you will, uh, or for threes, if you will, and then we're going to subtract and then add. And then finally, we're going to attach that uh, uh, variable term that cannot be combined with anything else. So just remember, just a refresher on order of operations. When you've got a problem that has multiple operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, etc., those are your operations. You have to follow your order of operations. There's an order to operate on a problem like there's an order to operate on a patient. All right, so we're being asked to evaluate these expressions for a given input. And remember, anything that doesn't have an equal sign, we call it an expression. If it has an equal sign, we call it an equation. So we're asked to evaluate these. What is the difference? In many cases, nothing. Uh, in many cases, there's absolutely nothing difference um, between those. Um, so we just, we just need to realize that, okay? But that is the language of math. And an expression is something without an equal sign, and an equation is something with an equal sign or, or thereabouts. So here we've got this expression, uh, uh, negative 7 times y plus 15, and we're being asked to, uh, for, for y equals 12. So uh, this is basically saying where we see y, let's put a 12 in here. So, so let's just rewrite this, and let's insert this for, for a y. So we've got minus 7 times 12 plus 15, okay? So we're going to multiply uh, you know, order of operations, we have multiplication, you know, when things are next to each other means multiply. All right, so we're going to multiply these two, and then we've got the operation of addition. So the first operation we're going to do is multiplication, the second operation we're going to do is addition, and then we'll have our solution. Well, hopefully we recall, hopefully we recall, anytime we multiply with signed numbers, plus signs, minus signs, positive, negative, Bert and Ernie, whatever you'll call them, if they're different, Okay, if they're different, uh, the answer is negative. So 7 times 12 is 84, but that's negative 7 times positive 12, so it's going to be negative 84 plus 15. Okay, so we're, now we're to the step of adding numbers with different signs. We're adding numbers with different signs. So what do we do here? Okay, well, if we recall, there's three steps. Step one is we do what? We ignore our signs. Step two, we subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So let's just use the little computer here. 84 minus 15. Our answer is 69. But is it positive or negative? Is it positive or negative? Well, that's where we go back to our original uh, problem here. Okay, and we look at the sign with the original numbers. Okay, uh, which of these numbers, if you will, if we were to put these numbers on a number line, which would be further away, distance-wise, from zero? Well, of course, the 84 would be. What's its sign? Negative. So the answer is negative 69. Okay, so evaluating this, this expression, uh, given that uh, y is equal to 12, would give us negative 69. Okay, so we want to do the next one. All righty here. So we've got negative n to the second plus 13 times n plus 2, and for n, we're going to say n is negative 5. 
So everywhere we see M, we're going to insert negative 5. Now, now one of the things we, get, we have to notice here, there's already a negative sign in front of the N. And we're going to be inserting a negative value there for N. Okay? You know, technically, that, that negative sign is not with that N right now. Technically, that is negative 1 times N to the second. There, there's a 1 implied to be there. Remember, mathematicians are lazy. Uh, we imply things. Okay? We imply things are there. So... So technically, there's another one coming in here. So if we wrote this one, we're going to need to do this. We're going to need to go negative, negative to the second. And the reason we're doing that, uh, the reason we're doing that is, is to separate the minus signs because it would look really funny if we did not do that. Okay? All right. So then we've got what? Plus 13 times negative 5 plus 2. So, so let's solve this problem right here. So what are we going to do first? What are we going to do first? All right. Well, again, we could expand this where it's negative 1 times negative 5 to the second plus 13 times negative 5 plus 2 if it helps you see what's going on. Um, bottom line, we're going to do this exponent first. And what is negative 5 times negative 5? Well, I'm glad you asked. Negative 5 times negative 5, signs are the same, so it's going to be positive 25. So we've got negative 1 times 25 plus, let's just go ahead and do this, what's 13 times 5? It should be 65, but let's check. 13 times 5 is 65, but the signs are different, so it's negative 65. And I put the parentheses there, uh, the grouping symbols to separate the plus and minus sign, plus 2. All right, so let's just keep going. Uh, negative 1 times 20, we, we've got what? We've got multiplication, we've got addition, we've got addition. Let's do our multiplication first. Negative 1 times 25 is negative 25. Uh, you know, this right here, we just go ahead and get rid of the, the plus sign, make that minus 65 plus 2. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we'll go ahead and group, if you will, the, the things that we can group together. Uh, it's not really required here, but it's really what we're doing. Let's just go ahead and combine the two negatives. You know, think about this. You're at minus 25 on your number line, and then you're going to go to the left on the number line because the left is negative. Uh, you know, zero in the middle, values to the left of zero are negative, values to the right of zero are positive. So if we're at minus 25 and we go 65 more to the left, you know, where are we at? Well, basically, we're just adding those numbers, okay? We're just adding those numbers. So this becomes minus 90 plus 2, minus 90 plus 2. And then we have the same scenario we had up here. We're, we're, we're going to add numbers with different signs. So step one, uh, we're going to ignore the signs. Step two, we're going to subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So there's our answer. And then we go back to the original numbers, and we imagine these being on a number line, which would be further from zero, 90 or 2. Well, of course 90 would be. What's the sign with 90? Minus. So our answer is minus 88. Okay? Minus 88. All righty. All right, we're going to evaluate uh, these problems as well. We're going to continue on doing what we've done. Now, here we're told basically where we see C in certain negative two ninths. So let's just rewrite this. So this becomes three eighths, and we'll do it this way, times minus two ninths. Okay, minus two ninths. So we know this is positive. We know that's negative. We know... You know, our, our rules for multiplying or dividing with signed numbers, if we multiply or divide and the signs are different, positive signs, negative signs, and here they are different, our answer is negative. We know that before we do any math. We know the answer is negative. Now, when it comes to multiplying or dividing with fractions, we do not need a common denominator. Uh, we can simply just multiply straight across. But remember as well, you know, the rule for fractions is you always reduce your final solution to the smallest form. Uh, and the only time you do not do so is when you're told not to do so. So we're not told not to do so here, so we're expected to simplify this answer. Well, what we can do here is actually simplify beforehand, if we recall this. What you can do is look at your cross numerator and your cross denominator. Here I'm looking at 3 and 9, and I'm asking, is there a number other than one, or are there numbers other than one? We say other than one because we're going to we'll look for numbers that will divide into both. 
And 3 divided by 1 is 3, and 9 divided by 1 is 9. We're not getting anywhere. So is there or are there numbers uh, greater than 1 that will divide evenly into both? And here, 3 will. 3 will divide into itself one time. 3 will divide into 9 three times. And then we do the same thing with the cross numerator here, 2, and denominator there, 8. And we ask the same question. Is there, is there meaning a single, or are there multiple numbers other than 1 that will divide into both? Okay, and if there are multiple numbers, you know, what's the largest one? Okay, and, and it will divide both numbers by that largest number. We'll simplify them to their smallest form. Well, here, hopefully, we see that 2 will divide in, into both. 2 will divide into itself one time. 2 will divide into uh, 8, what, four times. So now, instead of going 3 times 2, we're going 1 times 1. Instead of going 8 times 9, we're going 4 times 3. And there's our final solution, negative 1 12. Now, let me go ahead and give you a, a, a warning about this again. Our math books will tell us that if we do what we just did here, which is simplifying before multiplying, this answer is already simplified. It is not the case always. It is the case the vast majority of the time, 97, 98% of the time. Uh, but you can have random occurrences of numbers, okay, that even when you do this, this can be simplified further. So you always check. This one's simplified. All right, so we've got 4.5 times x to the second power plus 3.2 times x minus 10, and we're told everywhere we see x, insert 8. So let's do that. So we've got 4.5, uh, uh, we'll just go ahead and blow it out too, times 8 to the second, because we've inserted that for that, plus 3.2 um, times 8 minus 10. Okay, so order of operations, we have multiplication, exponent, addition, uh, multiplication, subtraction. So what are we going to do first? We're going to do the exponent. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So 4.5, 8 to the second is shorthand for what? 8 times 8, which is 64, okay, plus 3.2 times 8. Let's do that. 3.2 times 8 is 25 0.6 minus 10. Okay, so here we are. We, we, we've done some math. We did the exponent here. We did the multiplication there. So we went ahead and knocked out both of those steps. 8 to the second gave us 64. Uh, 3.2 times 8 gave us 25.6. Uh, we still have the operational multiplication, addition, subtraction. So we're going to do this multiplication. So we're going to go 4.5 times 64. We get 288 plus 25.6 minus 10. So we'll add 25.6 to that. We have 313.6. We'll subtract 10 from that, so minus 10. And we have a final solution of 303 and 6 tenths. All righty. So here we're being asked to solve an equation for a given variable. Uh, basically, we've got, this, we've got this equation here, negative 6 times x plus 9 times y is equal to 8, and we want to solve it for y. What does that mean? It basically means we want the y to be on one side of the equal sign by itself. Uh, common practice, common expectation is the left side. Does it really matter? No. Uh, but we'll follow common practice, common expectation until told otherwise. So in this problem here, we, we've got, if you will, there, there are some terms uh, on the left side of the equal sign uh, with the y. So we want those to go away. Well, anytime we're solving a problem like this, okay, we want to do what's called the addition principle first, which is basically get rid of the things that are not associated with our variable. Uh, and then do what's called the multiplication principle, which basically means get rid of that coefficient. That 9 is called the coefficient. That's the number in front of our variable. So how do we eliminate things mathematically? Well, we always do the opposite. Okay, So if this is negative 6x, the opposite would be plus 6x. And equal means balance, kind of like that scale. We want to keep it balanced, so we'll go plus 6x on that side. So these are going to cancel, so now we're left with 9 times y is equal to 6x 
plus eight. Eight doesn't have a sign in front of it, so we know it is what? It is positive. So now we were almost home. We want y by itself, so we need to eliminate the, the, the a term with it. This is called our coefficient. The number in front of the variable is called the coefficient. And remember, we always do the opposite. Okay, when we're eliminating uh, values mathematically, we always do the opposite. If we're adding, we're subtracting. If we're subtracting, we're adding. If we're multiplying, we're dividing. If we're dividing, we're multiplying. We're doing exponents, we're doing roots. We're doing roots, we're doing exponents, okay? We're always doing the opposite. Well, this is nine times y. The opposite of, of, of uh, multiplication is division. Again, our equal sign means balance. So we want to do the same thing on both sides. We're just going to divide both of those by nine. That will cancel, okay? And that will give us uh, y is equal to, well, let's see, we can simplify this. We can see this is a fraction. We can see that is 6 over 9. 3 will go into both of those. 3 will go into that twice. Um, 3 will go into that three times. X comes along for the ride. And then finally, 8 over 9, we can't simplify that. So there is our solution to this problem. And that is what it's called. You don't need to know that yet, but that is what is called a linear equation. We could actually plot this on a graph. Okay. All right. In this next one, we're being asked to uh, if volume is equal to pi times radius squared times height. That's that's. This is the formula for the volume of a. Um, um, it just escaped me. I think it's a cylinder. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're being asked to solve this formula for H. We want to know what H is. So, so the, what we're going to do, we're going to get H by itself. In this case, we'll just go ahead and leave the H on the right side. So let's, let's go ahead and expand this out so we see what's going on. And, and, and in doing so, it helps you <clears throat> understand what you want to do. So this is pi times the radius squared times the height. So what do we want? We want this to be isolated by itself. Uh, we'll just leave it on the right side of the equal sign this time. So we need to eliminate both of these numbers. So, so you know, we're multiplying here. So what can we do? Well, we can divide. Okay, we can divide those out. And again, equal means balance. So we have to do it on both sides. Okay. Those are going to cancel each other out. So on the right-hand side, we're left with H. On the left-hand side, we're equal, left with volume over pi times radius squared. We're not asked to figure out a solution. Um, we're at, this is called a literal equation. We're asked to basically uh, solve the problem for that value. Whatever H happens to be, that's what we would do. If, if we had numbers here... You know, if we knew what, we know what pi is, we're, we're told in most cases use 3.14. Uh, perhaps in this case we knew what volume was, and perhaps we also knew the radius. See, the radius was 6. 6 squared would be 36. Um, but we don't know the height, okay? Well, we could do all of this math and end up, you know, whatever this math over here happened to be, the volume divided by 3.14 times 36 would be our height, okay? Would be our height. Alrighty. Last slide. Solving an equation for a given variable, solve A equals principal. This, this is actually a, uh, uh, an equation you'll use for interest rates. Uh, the amount is equal to principal times one plus the, the, the rate, uh, interest rate times the amount of time in years. Time is in years for this type of equation. We want to solve for T. And here's a, here's a hint. Um, and th this comes along with the problem. I didn't put it there. It may help to distribute the P first. Okay? And as a rule, as a rule mathematically, we're always going to do that, not just for this type of equation. If we've got a set of grouping symbols, we want to eliminate the grouping symbols first. Now, now first thing we would try to do is do the math, but, but these are what are called different terms. Okay? We, we, don't, we know 1 is 1, but we don't know what R and T are. Okay, so we can't combine those. So we fall back on the distributive property, which says take what's outside the parentheses and multiply times everything in the parentheses. So if we do that, we're left with, let's say, P times 1, 1 times P, we're left with well, just 1P, plus P times R times T, it'd be PRT, okay? Uh, well, you got 1P and you got another P, you have what? You have 2Ps um, times R 
times t. We'll just go ahead and expand it out. That's what we're looking at here. And we want to solve this for t. So it's really the same thing we did before. We're just going to divide these out on both sides. So 2 times p times r cancels, cancels. We're left with t is equal to a over 2p times r. There is our solution to that problem. And there is our solution to that problem. Okay. Last one we've got today is we're trying to solve x minus 6y uh, equals minus 2. We're solving for y. So, so we're trying to you know, isolate this. We want this by itself. So again, we'll just do that addition principle first. Uh, that's a positive x, so we'll go minus x. Equal again means balance. Just remember that. Anything you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to, to, do to the other side. So that's minus 1x. So if we were to rewrite this, those have canceled. So we've got minus 6y is equal to minus x, minus 1x, minus 2. Again, we're trying to get uh, to isolate y by itself, so we need to eliminate this coefficient. That's negative 6y. So we're going, to, we're going to remove the coefficient. And remember your sign, this is critical, your sign, plus or minus, always goes with your coefficient. So the minus sign comes with it. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Those are going to cancel. We're left with y. Well, minus, and again, we see this as a fraction bar, right? Negative divided by negative, the signs are the same, so they're going to be positive, okay? And then here, 2 and 6, again, got the same sign, so it's going to be positive. Anytime you're multiplying or dividing, that's what we're doing here, right? We're taking each of these top numbers. I'm taking this and dividing it by 6. Well, negative divided by negative. Signs are the same. It's positive. Okay, divided by bottom. Same thing here, 2 and 6. We'll just leave them as fractions. But these will simplify. 2 will go into itself one time. 2 will go into 6 three times. So there's our final solution to this problem. All right, folks. Thanks.